So the first thing we're going to want to do is to clean all of the parts because uh, solder doesn't stick to greasy parts and glue doesn't stick to greasy parts. So the first thing you want to clean, clean all the holes on there and don't forget to clean the back. Next thing that you want to do is attach your battery and make sure that your power system is working. So the battery mounts on the bottom like so and as we can see the cords are way too long. So what we want to do is first take out the spacer assembly and stick the flathead screw through one of the holes there. Now there may be a little piece of plastic that will pop out when you stick it through. You stick that onto here and stick that onto here, stick this standoff on the other side there, and just temporarily attach it. And these wires are very fragile so you're going to want to be careful whenever this isn't screwed in. So we bend the wires over a bit and now we are ready to solder them in. So since these wires are way too long, we need to shorten them up a little bit. I like to loop it around just so that I can move the battery holder around later if I want. Because you can uh, always make the wires shorter, but it's difficult to make them longer. So pop that off, and then we carefully strip these two wires. Strip about, oh, half a centimeter off the ends there. Now we need to tend the wires because it's stranded wire and it's difficult to poke through the hole uh, and get all the strands through. So, uh, one thing that's useful to have here is a helping hands or an assistant to hold the wire still while you are working on it. So, to tend the wires, we first clean our solder tip using a sponge or a special brass sponge and we just apply the solder. Headphone wire is special uh, lacquer coated wire that is impossible to solder to until you remove the lacquer. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can get a lighter and try to burn the lacquer off. That doesn't always work that great. The uh, way that works pretty consistently is to get some sandpaper and pinch the wires in between the sandpaper. Alright, now that everything is tinned, we need to figure out which wire goes where. Now, unfortunately, uh, not every headphone cord has the same color scheme, so we need to check using your voltmeter set to continuity mode. Uh, which wire goes to which part of this connector. So, we want to start with the tip. This is called a TRRS connector or tip ring ring sleeve. So this is the tip. We have our meter set so that it beeps and there's continuity. We hold one lead to the tip and then we find the other end, find out which color it is. This one is blue, so the tip is blue, and the tip is the left channel. So we move down, we press our meter to the first ring, and we find out which one is the other, the next ring. So the first ring is green, we move down, and we find out this is Mike. We figure out which one it goes to Mike. And on this particular headphone cord, the mic is 
uh, copper colored. And finally we go to the sleeve, which is the ring that is closest to the where the wire comes out. And so by process of elimination, this should be red, but it's always good to double check. So now you know which one is which. The tip is blue, then which is left, then right, then mic, then ground or common. This is called an optocoupler, a quad optocoupler. It means there's four optocouplers inside of this beige colored chip here. So what it does is it isolates your phone optically so that there's no electrical connection between your phone and the board. This protects your phone from radio interference and it also protects your phone from any um, power surges or if the board is not properly assembled or anything like that. So you don't want to fry your expensive phone. So the way that we test this is we simply check starting at the tip the tip should go to only the left pad and keep keep your uh, one probe on the tip and then check the other pads and make sure that it does not beep on any of the other pads and then you continue go to the first ring you check that it beeps for the right channel not any of the other ones continue down and check all the other ones the way we assemble the drive wheels just plug in your hot glue gun let it warm up and find the large servo horn again you want to clean the area around the hole of the CD with a little bit of alcohol and then rough it up a little bit with some sandpaper and this will make your glue stick much better alright after that's roughed up just clean it again to get any oil or grease off of it now you want the largest servo horn you stick the largest servo horn in so that the uh, splined hole is facing down when you're on the shiny laser side of the board then you remove the, the small donut and you use it to hold this horn centered in the hole. So you just line it up. And you get it nice and centered. And that little donut will hold it in place for you. So the next thing you're going to want to do is protect your spline hole from the glue. So you get a little piece of the extra label, stick it over the hole, do the same thing on the other side, and that will prevent any stray glue from getting into the holes. Now you simply uh, apply your hot glue, take uh, your double sided tape, pull off a piece, stick it on the whole side there, take your other piece, stick it there, pull off the backing, and once you have the backing off, take your two servos, the wire, and the horn should be going up against this L shape. Press the uh, uh, tab here against so it's flush against the edge of the servo bracket and just 